Maybe because the Samsung Galaxy A23 has a huge screen, and the galaxies are a huge gravitational bound system of stars rotating around a supermassive black hole. And the phone is free? When you switch to his mobile. Cool. You lost me a gravitational now. So what's the boost to get a free Samsung? All right, so here's something a little bit different. Uh, I'm tearing into Joe's. Uh, Joe has it. I'm, I'm tearing into Joe's rear end. We're rebuilding it. Uh, this is the second time I've actually been in this unit. Uh, not what I'm showing you right now, uh, but I installed this uh, True Track. I believe the last time this was apart, I put a True Track and a gear in it. Uh, I could be wrong. It might have already had the True Track in it. Anyway, uh, it had a bearing failure. This is in a like a 1300 wheel horsepower. Uh, 2007 GT500 38 Whipple with a 4L80. So this thing sees a lot of abuse. Uh, so for any anything that has that much power, we're really going to go into a like a 31, 33 spline True Track unit, or uh, if it's going to be a major drag race application, then we're definitely going into an S Track. Uh, if it's going to see a lot of street use, more street use. If it sees more street use than strip use, it's going to get an S track or a, a, a helical style differential. And that's the point of this video. I want to show you guys what a helical style differential is, uh, how the components work, why it's strongest and how it doesn't have any wear per se, uh, like a clutch style unit does. And this is why we kind of favor these units, even though they're a couple more bucks. Um, there is some pros and cons to these helical style units that we've learned, uh, which we'll discuss that, uh, towards the end of the video, but let's just, dig into the internals on Joe's. I, I tore it all apart. They tell you not to do that, but we had a bearing race delamination failure. So there was like little shards of basically hardened steel floating around this differential. Uh, luckily, I do not see any major wear and he pretty much stopped driving it once the bearing noise started to develop. So he pretty much stopped driving it right away. But I wanna make sure I cleaned every nook and cranny on this rear end before it goes back to the other, especially given the extreme circumstances that he puts it through. So uh, let's check it out. So here is the 33 spline true track. This is a uh, Eaton unit. Uh, this is the route that we typically go in most high horsepower builds, like I said a second ago. Uh, but it's kind of cool seeing how it works and seeing it all torn apart. It's actually relatively simple. Uh, there's no clutch packs. There's no springs. There's really just what you see here. The two bearing end caps, which caps the differential. Like that, to give you the bearing race on each side. It gives you the worm gears that's gonna actually split the load from side to side. So you'll see, I could just actually show you the wear and you could see how it's splitting the load between these two gears because when these are in the case, they interlock like this. And when the load is transferred into the case, that load is transferred into these gears and then it splits the torque through the worm gears to share the load side to side to spin each axle, which this is actually all that spins the axle. So one part of this is on this side. Actually, I can probably stack it up like this. That's how it's kind of in the case. Kind of cool. So how do these work um, without having any sort of spring or clutch in it? Uh, well, the case. The case does the majority of the work. And as you can see, this is a beefy boy. This is a billet steel unit. It's all billet steel. I've already cleaned it out. Luckily, it wasn't a whole lot of stuff in it. So how to figure out any how anything really works. Um, you follow the load, right? So you got the pinion driving this. This is in the back of the car. You got the pinion trying to drive this forward. So the load is transferred from the ring gear to the case. And then the case, in this, in this case, no pun intended, is transferring the load from the case to these individual gears. So all the load is really kind of fully surrounded in billet steel. It's not relying on just the splines on the outside or the case holding the splines together because on a clutch style differential, it has ears on the clutch pack. So when the clutch packs get loaded, it's kind of splitting all that load through the two ears on the side um, and then putting that into a very small cast case where this thing is a freaking unit you're not going to break that uh anyway so when the gears are in here I'll just give you a quick example 
So this is how this works. Now that gear is split over to the other set of worm gears. You can see the little notch for it right there. And that's where the load gets divided side to side. Now there is a chance with these that you're gonna get one wheel peels. I've, I've, ha I've experienced it myself, but it really is in a 100 and zero load split. Meaning if you push the car really hard through a turn and the whole body, especially in like a drag car, if you don't have an anti-roll bar or no sway bars, with all the weight is on one side of the car and this side is freewheeling, then it will spin just one tire. And now looking at how this is designed, basically what's happening is one side is stuck to the ground speed and then the other side is just spinning. So all these little gears that are in here would be spinning their ass off because one tire is following the differential speed and one tire is following the road speed and it's not able to split it between the two gears. So that is the downside that this happens once in a while on this type of application. But the positive is, is that it's pretty consistent. So if it happens, you you can kind of know when it's going to happen. In my on my car, I noticed it when I used to drive it as a daily uh, in the rain. And if I was going to go through a turn and the pavement was slippery, then it would spin the inside tire. Um, very rarely, but I know I knew how to do it and how to avoid it doing it. Otherwise, it was locked up almost all the time. Uh, the best thing for these seems to be shocking it. So in a drag race application, that initial clutch dump is really important to kind of lock both tires together. Um, if you're going to slide a car with one of these, you know, uh, abrupt throttle actually helps rather than just consistent throttle because if one tire decides to bite, the other one's going to spin. So making sure that they're staying together. Although I just want to stress, it is extremely rare to get a one tire situation. Uh, let's talk about the wear on these things. So the wear on here is literally this. This is what wears, and this is standard gear wear. There's nothing on here that's alarming. You know, it's obviously all hardened and billet and crazy. Now uh, these are cast, but um, you know, this this has some kind of coating on it. It's got very little wear on it. So there's nothing that's going to change the operation of this as it wears in and gets miles. In fact, Eaton says that it's like a million mile carrier because it's not going to need to be serviced. There's no clutch packs to wear out, there's no springs to get soft or break. Uh, it's literally just all mechanical, very smooth operation. Um, the weird things about these is that when the car is in the air on the lift, you could spin both tires independently of each other. And if you spin one tire, you'll see that the other tire goes backwards. But as soon as you try to spin them both forward, you'll see the pinion moves. Also, they have a little bit more driveline slop. And the reason being is that the, all the load that you're trying to send in through the pinion, has to be coupled through the gear mesh of all this. So that's a, a pro and a con. The con of it is, is that you are gonna get more driveline wear, or driveline slop as we call it, as these two things couple up. And not only do these two things need to couple up, but it needs to split that load to the other side in order to move the carrier forward. So. You do add some driveline slop. So uh, what we've learned, obviously we do a lot of Cobras, 0304 Cobras. Um, they are notorious for the Cobra clunk. This differential does not make that any better. You know, if you solidify the IRS on those, dip, on those uh, cars and you put one of these in there, it is more noisy, but it is also like indestructible. So, you know, like everything race car, if you increase the strength um, and you increase the predictability of the outcome, you also increase your NVH, um, your noise vibration and harshness uh, of that differential. But they do seem to work better as a, on the solid axle applications. And the IRS, we actually still tend to stick with a clutch style differential. Uh, Eaton makes a good HD clutch style that has uh, adjustable springs um, and different clutch materials so you can make it really aggressive or not so aggressive. But that do does help get rid of some of the play in here. Um, if you are okay with having a little bit of extra noise or maybe you're just not as picky as me and you don't even pick up on it like most people, um, then you won't even notice the difference. But I know being that I've driven uh, you know, 30 of those cars or more uh, this year or this last year, 
that putting these in there does make a slight bit of difference. So anyway, this is all clean. This is all ready to go back together. Uh, Joe's GT500 has a clean bill of health. The gear wear is fantastic, both sides. Um, it just unfortunately ruined the gear and it ruined my, by doing so, it ruined the solid spacer that we use. So maybe I'll switch to a different style for that. Uh, instead of using this Raytex style, maybe I'll put a strange one in it. Um, but that's all I want to bring you guys on the Helico style differential. I thought it was just kind of cool to see what the inside of one of these things will look like. Uh, we do have some obviously cool projects in the works and make sure you go check out the YouTube channel so you can see not only this quick video, uh, but other videos that you guys will see us unroll this year. We're going to have a lot more content. So just a quick cell phone upload for you guys. Uh, I'm going to put this together, put the differential back together and uh, that's going to be the last that you'll see of it. Thanks a lot. Bye.